hear us squawk on this episode of the Pine Talk, Villa and Pasquale will share their stock of information to keep you up to date around the clock. Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of Pine Talk, the podcast for the Pine 64 community by members of the Pine 64 community. I am Peter, your sim informed mobile Linux nerd. And I am Ezra, feeler of feelings and dreamer of dreams. <laughs> the Community quote of the day today is by Camden Bruce at Ender Knight Lord on Twitter. Burning out is only the first step to greatness. I can relate to this quote. He says that it uh, hits hard. Uh, he says that he burns out a lot, but always comes back with a fresh mind sooner or later, and that that keeps him going stronger. Um. As mentioned in the last episode, I've been working on a point-and-click game for the past three years as a fan project, all the while making YouTube videos and, as of recently, being the co-host of this very podcast. So, yeah, putting in a lot of effort uh, and, and burning out, especially when you're working on, say, things you're passionate about, can help. Uh, it, it's not always going to be easy, but... I do, I do like, uh, I do like that. I can relate to the quote because, uh, you have to work hard to do great things. What do you think, Peter? Yeah, I agree. Sometimes you really have to go until you hit a limit, maybe not really run into the hard wall of serious burnout, like when you can't get up anymore. But as long as you go really for it, you will eventually feel exhausted and then you will recover and go back to it that's really good and i think if you're passionate that will happen and that has to happen because otherwise you're not passionate enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so thank you so much ender night lord if you have a quote of the day you'd like to share with us send us one and it may be picked and featured in the next episode in this episode, we will be discussing some Pine64 community news and more news, as well as going through one question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but first, what have you been up to lately? Well, as I said, I'm still working on my point-and-click adventure fan game. I don't know if I mentioned this last time, I don't think I did, but I have uh, I have a small team helping me out artistically, and I wanted to... to mention them because uh you know i'm not a great artist so any parts of the game that uh, look nice are not thanks to me but uh it shows the power of teamwork and i think in uh, the open source community that's that's what it's all about it's about working together being on the same team and making something awesome together all things considered i'm really excited to finish my project in about 70 days Great. Um, yeah. What about you, Peter? What have you been up to? Yeah, I've been taking a week off uh, of my day job, and I've been trying to relax for a bit. Uh, I wasn't too successful at it because I somehow kept ending up back again on the Twitters and the Mastodon and watching videos. And, of course, I had to keep my weekly upgrades going during that period. But I feel somewhat relaxed and uh, a b little bit fresher and seem to have a little bit more energy. So I hope that persists for a while. And then, yeah, sure, more time off would have been better, but that's always the case, right? Mm-hmm. And with that, let's uh, go on to the news. And first up, we have industry news as i call it and that's uh arm you know this uh funny risk 5 competitor uh they've been <laughs> announcing a new revision of their arm architecture and that's the arm v9 architecture and it's well for the next decade basically so it's in october 2011 they announced their ARM v8 architecture, uh, which brought 64 bits 
to the ARM world. So before that, they, there had been no uh, 64-bit cores, only 32-bit. I don't know, maybe in the really old days, maybe there have been less bitage ARM chips. <laughs> it didn't look that up, but yeah. Uh, so ARM V8 is something that we've had for a long time and that we have in all our hardware currently. So ARM mm -hmm. V7 still is a thing with projects like Postmarketers uh, on some really old phones that were made like uh, in, I don't know, 2009, like the Nokia 900 or uh, 2011, like the Motorola Droid 4 or devices like that. But generally everything for a while has been ARM V8. And now they are trying to do something new and trying to um, improve and of course such a number change after 10 years almost has to bring some big new visions almost mm -hmm. and they are of course going for more um, machine learning for more vector instructions uh, so more vector processing uh, and yeah it's quite interesting. Uh, we've linked an article by Anantec about the topic, which is usually quite the competent source. And um, yeah, maybe read that if you care about this stuff. Uh, I actually don't understand everything of it because, well, turns out I'm not a CPU guy after all. Mm -hmm. I don't design these things or anything, but uh, it's still quite uh, interesting and I think it will be a while until we see first CPUs or first uh, systems on a chip using this architecture if I remember correctly the first real 64-bit ARM chip out in uh, embedded or production devices was uh, the iPhone 5S which with its Apple A7 silicon Mm -hmm. in late 2013 so um, there they had two years of runtime so uh, i don't know whether it's going to go faster this time but yeah i wouldn't expect these of uh, course so soon but given that they are also among other things promising uh, uh, like 2.4x performance increases uh, over an a72 class design that's something to look forward to, I think. I think there's uh, something else to look forward to as well in uh, in our own open wider the wider open source community. Of course, definitely. Which is the release of GTK four point two point zero and lib at Weta. So yeah, well, with uh, GNOME forty and. and other things like uh, like that are definitely uh, they're they're pushing forward the the aesthetic I would say of GDK yeah. and, and, and and GNOME right and they're modernizing the stack uh, right yes especially with GNOME forty one the upcoming release so GNOME forty is mostly uh, uh, an well visual overhaul but GNOME mm -hmm. forty one is actually really going to ship more GTK four apps. I'm not mm -hmm. even sure if any of the GTK, uh, GNOME 40 core apps is already GTK4. I don't know either. But uh, now with uh, GTK4.2.0, um, there's one pretty important feature that's going to help mm -hmm. us all uh, on our Pine phones or other hardware, and that is they've got a new uh, renderer. That's the NGL renderer, and this is... Uh, they even mentioned the Lima driver, so that's what the Mali graphics in the Pine phone uses. Mm -hmm. That uh, this is performance on that is much improved, and I mean before it wasn't really working. Um, there's a GTK four demo app uh, th that you get when you install GTK four, and I have been doing that for a while on my uh, Arch Linux ARM installed on the Pine phone. And recently I got that new release and suddenly some Gears demo that basically looks a lot like GLX Gears, which you may know from testing graphics cards or stuff, mm -hmm. 
uh, is now working versus before it always that couldn't create G uh, GL context. It now mm -hmm. just uh, shows those gears turning and turning. So yeah, this That's is definite smooth. progress and I'm really glad that this is happening. How smooth are those gears turning? Well, they are at, I don't know, like 30 to 40 FPS usually, which mm -hmm. is not quite where one would like them to have. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely better to have some working GPU acceleration than none because for sure uh, this is going to help. And, you know, this is without any optimizations. I didn't supply any mm -hmm. environmental variables or anything. So I just tried it and yeah, I was quite happy. The NGL renderer, the not gonna lie renderer. And <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie, that looks really interesting and very promising. Yeah, I totally agree. And the same <laughs> is with Lib Advaita, Ad, Advaita, which is basically uh, a continuation of Lipendi on the GTK4 side, and which is going to be more of a general widget library for GNOME apps, uh, which mm -hmm. is something that the GNOME platform has always been lacking. Um, there have been some other approaches to this before. Um, I don't really recall the names of these libraries up off the top of my head, but I think it's good that they now have one uh, blessed widget library for writing GNOME apps. I think this is going to make the life of developers easier, after all, mm -hmm. on mobile and desktop platforms. And I think it's I'm really glad that this is uh, happening. So it's very exciting, and and it's going to help with their idea of uh, uh, unifying all all the various applications. I think too. Yeah, it basically implements the uh, GNOME human interface guidelines, so these can mm -hmm. be uh, well then deployed much easier in apps because if you've got the set of widgets basically to fulfill these demands by the guidelines. It's just making life easier and will lead to overall better experiences and uh, hopefully more and better apps. Yeah. Not, and we are already seeing some. So uh, as you may know, I maintain this uh, apps list at well, linmobapps.frama.io I'll link it so that you don't have to uh, somehow decipher my spelling. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, um, there are, we already had some uh, lip at GTK4 lip advaita apps before this announcement on March 31st. So, and there are more and more coming, uh, more and more apps are uh, being brought over. So I've seen quite a lot of uh, GTK4 branches on existing projects awesome next up let's go over to those that use this software and somehow bundle it to form something we call distribution uh -huh. and there's one project that uh, you will all remember from the community editions and that is post market os they had the second community edition um, the first community edition that shipped the three gigabytes RAM convergence edition Pine phones. And they have now announced their second beta release, version 21.03. It's based on Alpine Linux 3.13. They've went up from just supporting the Pine phone as only device to 11 supported devices. Um, so maybe that's something for all your friends that want to have a Linux phone but can't afford a Pine phone or uh, <laughs> are wanting one now while <laughs> there are sadly no Pine phones on sale, which will uh, sadly likely happen again. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's uh, quite interesting. I think they've uh, made quite some progress. Also in there, by the way, is... Uh, the SXMO SimpleX Mobile release 1.4.0, which also was released, I think, in the past week. So, uh, as of, well, 
as of recording. But uh, when you listen to this in the past 10 days or something, yeah. Um, so that's quite good news, I think. And I'm mm -hmm. really looking uh, forward to seeing more of them and to uh, wish them all the best with the uh, great little OS. Also, they've got a nice podcast. Uh, which you should give a listen. It's quite technical, but I found it really informative and enjoyable. It could be fun to learn about the the back end of uh, of, of what goes into like the hard work that actually goes into creating a phone too. Yeah, and they've been at this for a while. I mean, Post Market West was started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fall of 2017, so that's like more than three years now three and a half years maybe and they've made quite some progress of course only with the help of the wider community and so on but i think the concept they came up with using alpine linux as a base and then building upon that with tools like pm bootstrap which is quite amazing uh, and that i've been meaning to write a blog post about that for quite a while but well, haven't gotten to it yet. Um, really, uh, that's quite cool. And now let's shift to something more Pine64 and come to the Pine64 community news, <laughs> <laughs> our second segment of community news. And the first item is help us help others. Mm -hmm. So Pine64 have... Uh, basically, uh, 100, more than 100 original 11.6 inch pine books that they wish to donate to a worthy cause. So these pine books are running uh, Manjaro with the accelerated KDE Plasma desktop, and uh, they would like to give it away to organizations in need. Mm -hmm. So if you have any ideas which uh, organizations could make a good use of these uh, Pine books, please uh, tell Pine64 about it. Or if you are working at an organ such an organization, just mm -hmm. uh, contact them directly. Then there's something else about the Pinebook Pro that Ezra put in here. <laughs> that is right. I wanted to talk about the dual screen Pinebook Pro project by Robbie Ferguson. Am I saying that right? Um, he made a post on the Pine64 blog showing how he turned his uh, Pinebook Pro into a portable multi-monitor Linux laptop and shows how you can do the same. There's even a step-by-step -step tutorial video on the Category 5 Technology TV YouTube channel. There will be a link. Um, it's easy, fun, and inexpensive. I suggest giving it a try if you're willing. Uh, what is Pine64 about if not tinkering? And I'll go back on that. Uh, it's easy. So, you know, it, it can be a great, <laughs> a great first project. I don't think you can really mess it up. It's um, it, it's it's yeah, it's just fun to 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 see it working and have everything just connect up. Yeah. Um. By the way, uh, the Pinebook Pro with the US ANSI keyboard and the Pinephone Beta edition is available for pre-order, so you can check it out. At the Pine 64 shop. That's right. And speaking of the Pine phone, there's been something quite fun just slightly after April Fool's Day. And that was a blog post that really uh, went viral almost on Hacker News and similar platforms. And that is this blog is now hosted on a GPS slash LTE modem. And yeah, somebody uh, <laughs> took their Pine phone, hosted a website on it, and wasn't like, hey, I'm just going to use this Albany A64 core. No, 
why not use that LTE modem, right? And so they did. And well, you may yeah. ask why, and the answer is why not? Because <laughs> you can. So what, what's uh, what's this community about if not tinkering? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's no fun if you've got that much RAM you've got on Pine Phone. Just go with an ARM V7 CPU in the modem, and then get some uh, really simple dark HTTP httpd uh web server on there and then a single site generated block and boom and actually that site has been working quite nicely all the time mm -hmm. so yeah i've been actually considering that too briefly <laughs> but then i forget no i need my pine phones for other things <laughs> <laughs> i can't ruin my modem with that but um it's definitely quite cool Oh, for sure. I mean, how do you tell? How do you? How do you even share that to uh, to someone that doesn't know? You know, hey, I'm running a server. Where's your server? In my phone. Oh, it's running on the phone CPU. No, it's running on the secondary <laughs> CPU, the LTE modem, <laughs> because I can. <laughs> Literally, my server is inside the phone. <laughs> that is awesome. Something yeah. else that's awesome is something to consider. This is something that uh, you brought to the table. Yeah. Uh, do you really want a Linux phone by Martin Bram? That's right. Martin Bram is a post-market OS developer. He's been developing quite a number of apps, uh, some of which you will certainly have heard of, like Megapixels, the camera app. and well, I I think it's a mischaracterization if I say that he's been blowing off some steam because this is not a rant, but it's definitely an opinion piece and I think he has a really good point here, multiple good points. So if you haven't read it yet, the brief summary is that there's a lot of a community uh, and many people are talking in the chats, but not that many developers. And people uh, bother him with simple problems like, "Hey, uh, why doesn't uh, why why is there this extra file after making a picture with megapixels like the DNG?" All that photo upload is missing, and <laughs> there's this nice line in here, all caps. It's a script. Change it. <laughs> Do you really want a Linux phone? So, yeah. Um, I think there's certainly been an influx of people that have been uh, getting the Pine phone because they were like, well, I don't want to run iOS or Android and that aren't really... Linux sets, so I can totally understand in one way that these questions come in mm -hmm. because, well, if you've never dealt with any shell scripts, uh, you wouldn't know how to make these adjustments yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But then it's, yeah, uh, I mean, didn't you read the shop? <laughs> <laughs> it says whom this phone is still for so there, there's if i may interject there. sure uh, there there is um an aspect that could be um false advertising not from pine but from the community as i was i, w I once got a comment uh either on youtube or on reddit about one of my videos one of the first ones I made, actually, about the Pine Phone. Yeah. Where I was kind of um, uh, selling it as a, a kind of a maximum protection phone at a budget. Yeah, I remember Which isn't that inherently one. wrong, but it's not inherently true either. <laughs> yeah. And so people hear that and they're like, oh, what? It's like only this much and it runs Linux. I heard Linux is secure and he's saying that this phone is secure and it's like super fun to use. And there's these switches on the back. Oh, wow. I'm going to get one. 
not knowing really what they're getting into, which is more of a Linux nerd project and less of a privacy. I I I I take care of my privacy kind of yeah. product. Yeah. At least as of now, it's a tinkerer's device. I would say, which is, you know, when when he says like, "Do you really want a Linux phone?" I think that's what he's asking. Is do you like? Especially if he, with his his all caps, it's a script to change it. I mean, Linux has always in the past and in the present and most likely <laughs> throughout the future. If there's something you don't like and it's not doing something you want it to, just fork it. If it's a script, just modify it. Like, that's yeah. the whole point. And if you don't know at least a minimum of it, where you don't know who to contact and or what to do like i don't know you were because you were mentioning peter he had an issue with your audio right yeah and you're not much of a programmer uh but you know you know your linux system and you know how to make it do what you want it to do you just have to look around give me time and i will fix it eventually (laughs) (laughs) and i will usually not bother anyone with it except uh poor old search engines (laughs) 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 i'm going to get a lot of queries until i find something that hints me in the correct direction yeah right so so but that's a skill that i also had to acquire and there was a time when Mm -hmm. i was the guy on the forums whining that something would work. <laughs> so, I mean, we've we've been there. Well, I haven't. I'm proud to say. <laughs> yeah, you always knew how everything worked. I know. <laughs> I know. Ezra, Ezra is uh, the exception of the rule, but, uh, you know, every rule has an exception. So that's Ezra. Both words start with an E, so that's totally plausible. <laughs> <laughs> exceptional as well well i mean just because i don't (laughs) it's just because i never bothered anyone doesn't mean i know what i'm doing but i do (laughs) end up fixing it (laughs) yeah i mean eventually um uh, you know initially uh, fixing for me was nuke and pave and then i figured well this is not sustainable so (laughs) i've uh, since developed uh somewhat of some skills you know to know where some s- configuration options are where the files are mm-hmm. what is slash etsy right <laughs> mm-hmm. and that that helped a lot or you know knowing around uh knowing how to navigate your init system another yeah. one of these and that's certainly important and yeah, yeah. yeah. The, currently i think the pine phone even though there's been massive progress uh, since I got my first one in June of 2020, I have to say it's still somewhat more of well, you buy this like a kit and then you take it to the racetrack. It's not a car that you take and you just drive it on the street, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So it's special and yeah, it's not always. Uh, it's a bit rough around the edges here and there <laughs> and then you think it's fine and then you're like hey let's upgrade and oops okay uh now we've got in you know we've got pipe wire instead of pulse and my audio is broken and i've got to do something <laughs> <laughs> like for example recently happened with post market edge that's why i've got this example from but yeah so you need to and know where to look for the correct information to fix it. Uh, that's mm-hmm. one thing. And then, he, but he has more points than just yeah. this. Uh, so uh, he goes into the number of distributions, <laughs> <laughs> which is ever growing. And I have to say, I didn't look at Skiff OS yet. For example, I think it's something where your main OS is virtualized, but I, I didn't try it yet not for a video and not otherwise so that's still something i need to do and then he goes into how this uh, dis- different distributions are differ from the origins like with uh, Danknex or arch mobile that uh, comes pre-installed with well being ready to use which normal arch certainly isn't 
Mm -hmm. And all that. And then gets into the Android apps, <laughs> Android ROMs, people wanting Android ROMs. And that's something where I'm always uh, sitting there too and like, oh my God, people, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to get an Android phone, get an Android just, just, phone. Just get an Android phone. There are plenty. <laughs> and they're pretty mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. If you want an yeah. Android phone. Yeah. So do you really want a Linux phone? Yeah. And there's another thing issue, the versus culture. What mm. could that be about, I wonder? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, what people have been telling us, the phone that shall not be mentioned. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a phone that I can happily mention because I have one and uh, I'm, well, I'm not totally happy with it, but I see a ton of potential and I know that purism put a ton of work in the Librem 5 and having the hardware I have to say well this is pretty good and uh, if they keep working on the software at the pace they are doing uh, which has benefited, benefited the Pine phone a lot if you think about uh, the I don't know three community editions of 5 that ship with basically Purism's stack um, uh, so yeah, if they keep working on it and keep working on PureS and chip advancement, then um, I think you, eventually people are going to be quite happy with uh, their Librem 5s. I'm pretty sure of that, actually. And mm -hmm. I'm not joking. I mean, the price is what it is, but uh, they have, they are delivering, in the, they are in the process of delivering, and if they can keep it up the way they are, it's going to be quite good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm yeah. I'm really trying to say that there's potential there, <laughs> mm -hmm. like with the Pine Phone, uh, and with all mm -hmm. the other software projects that we have. It's still early days, and there is no. And I agree with Martin here. Uh, there is no other side. It's one side. So these are different devices. They have different price points, different hardware, but. Uh, if one of them succeeds, it always benefits the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not like, oh, if the the Pine uh, if the Librem 5 dies off, then the Pine phone has won and that's good for everybody. No, it's not. <laughs> Seriously, it's not. It, it, and I think, even though this isn't necessarily exactly what he's saying, it, I, I want to mix his... Um, what he says about the versus culture and what he says about all these many distributions. Well, well actually, you haven't mentioned that. He mentions, like, how, well, we said, we, yeah, we, we did mention a bit with the, uh, how people want Android stuff. Yeah. <laughs> working on it. And it, people also want a whole bunch of features and they want their phones to seem like Android and feature, feature, feature. So yeah. a lot of these developers end up working on these features, but uh, they're spreading themselves too thin that there isn't any solid foundation. They're just making stuff that doesn't work or works kind of halfway, you know? Yeah. So. And I I think if we mix both mentalities together, that, uh, well, one, different distros aren't competing with each other, right? They're, yeah. uh, they should work together and perhaps uh, work on making more modular software and and use a bit of that Unix philosophy of programs take input in and spit output out yeah uh so that things can more easily connect together at least as much as we can i think that would be really really nifty if it could be similar to how the desktop linux desktop uh, ecosystem works if that makes sense yeah, um definitely and i think libedweta is is somewhat of a good example of that yeah and like Lipandi was, what, which is, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. by the way was a, a purism initiative initially. There you go. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes uh, I've seen parts of this with, with the app list, um, which I've spent a number of hours on, way more than you would believe by looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> like there are, I don't know, in one week, 
I added like four apps that were all front front ends for pass password store. Um, you know, the uh, GPG based password database thing. And they were all having GTK front ends and all written in Python. And I was like, guys, guys. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Maybe it's really faster to uh, quickly script that together if you somewhat know what you're doing than using a search engine whether somebody else has already done this. <laughs> <laughs> but you know all of them m- may have benefited from maybe working together uh-huh. if you know what i mean so and not um going from scratch mm-hmm. right not reinventing the wheel yeah like uh, okay i like what you did there but uh let's choose nicer icons and then or maybe let's add this feature mm-hmm. and yeah uh, that sometimes I think collaboration is beneficial, but in a way, the way everything is set up, you know, the community sometimes feels quite scattered to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, sure. So when I'm, and again, I have to go back to that app list. Sorry for mentioning it that much this episode, but you when I'm on looking at linmob.net. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, but, you know, apps. you're looking for apps. So I'm going through the GNOME Git, GitLab instance. I'm going through GitLab.org, which is surprisingly uh, difficult um, mm-hmm. compared to GitHub, which is really easily searchable for projects. And then there are all these other fun little Gits. And then you go through, okay, um, maybe that developer that has made three apps has made a fourth one. <laughs> and you, because that is a person that hosts their stuff on their own uh, GitLab instance. And so you have to basically visit that one and see if there's a new repo uh, to find them all, right? And I, I don't mm-hmm. do that often. But this is really a part of the problem, this discoverability. There is not a forum but there's a forum then there are multiple subreddits and there are all these chat channels which are bridged uh, which usually works but sometimes when you only see irc uh content in metrics you know okay i guess the bridge to discord is currently broken (laughs) (laughs) and all that so it's just scattered and every distribution has their own channels and Mm -hmm. those are always bridged everywhere and whatnot so um, i think that's really the hard part of organizing this information and getting Mm -hmm. people together Mm -hmm. right i mean i think there are two projects currently that work on a flutter ui for the pine phone so martin's Uh, Martin doesn't seem to have a very good opinion of Flutter um, because, well, yeah, I mean, it's a Google technology. And I get it because uh, Qt and GTK are fine. Mm -hmm. But then I've got nothing against people trying stuff with Flutter. Why not? Uh, Just scratch scratch your itch, people. But now we already have two UIs being in development (laughs) based on (laughs) Flutter for the Python. And both are in early stages. And would certainly benefit from collaboration, mm-hmm. but likely have different visions in terms of user interface, and that yeah. will never work together. So, yeah, maybe this is just what it's like. But eventually, I think the projects that don't manage to build a community, that don't manage to work together on stuff, they will not prevail. Yeah, they will go away. And the ones that will prevail are the ones that collaborate constructively i I agree i i I 100 agree and guys we're not saying you know that you're not allowed to have your own opinion and your own projects with your own ideologies but share share them share them more collaborate more like uh, peter said and and like I, i you mentioned gdk and i think that's also a grand example of like you know gnome has the, their philosophy of how things should look 
Yeah. <laughs> and they're <laughs> they're implementing it in into uh like uh with a ad- weight and, and such but you know GDK is still like it's been uh, I don't is this true? I think this is true. Like let's say we think about just a jump between Gnome 2 and Gnome 3 and how Gnome 2 became Mate. Mate. Yeah. And how that <laughs> and also cinnamon. became cinnamon. <laughs> and uh what's the one called by Solos? Uh Budgie. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's that's a lot of uh projects. But then again, I think if a project can survive a couple of years, then it apparently is needed and thus uh survives, right? Yeah. And those people that forked the project, so they did benefit from everything, you know, no yeah. one did up to that point. So there's that going for them. But uh, I don't know. It, I, the best thing, I think, is going back to what I said earlier with the Unix philosophy. Not that it's necessarily easy, but uh, if you can make programs that um, are more backbone and modular and can be modified easily... Um, that would allow multiple people to use it and then apply their own philosophy to, let's say, UI. Yeah. Where you make it easy to put a button on the top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right, and then you choose what your OS, where your OS puts it. Other people can choose where their OS puts it. And maybe the user gets to choose too, put an option in the settings. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I think that's that's quite good. So... I- think we've went through this in depth so yes <laughs> if you've got uh any feedback for this please uh, get in touch um we've got this uh twitter you know we're at talkpine on twitter we are at talkpine at foster.org on the fediverse and you can also use the hashtag ask pine talk or just pine talk maybe whatever you want you can also write us an email at to pine talk at pine64.org or come to our Discord and discuss this because please uh, let's have a discussion on this I think this is a necessary discussion and there are arguments for both sides like uh, for Mm -hmm. hey no sorry guys I can't I don't have I don't want to wait for a maintainer of another project I'll just to accept my pull request I'll just come up with my own and do it that way because yeah maybe you've made bad experiences whatever it is just uh let's have a talk about that and then uh i think let's go to more community engagement and we ask not only for the quote of the day Day. week what is it (laughs) i think i called it a quote of the day even though we do it like bi-weekly quote of the episode whatever quote mm-hmm. of the day uh and i asked for your favorite april fooleries and we've just listed them here uh so just have fun going through them we've got few four ones here uh and while well, talking about them would be boring so have have a look at our show notes for that and now let's go over to the listener questions. At Otto's game asks, is there any chance of the at signal app coming to the Pine phone? Ezra, what do you think? I think you should ask them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good one. Well, but I mean the the desktop app is already there. It just needs some uh some fixing yeah. some refactoring to work on mobile <laughs> um that's a good point the desktop app is there and also there's axolotl which originally was created for ubuntu touch mm-hmm. which i have working on uh, my arch linux arm install here uh, because somebody packaged it up for mobian and then someone else from the manjaro project i think wrote a package build script to um, basically uh, bring this over to Manjaro and Arch 
these depth files. <laughs> the other one, uh, other person is building. So um, there's a way to have at least texting via signal already on the Pine Fournet. If I'm not totally mistaken, I think uh, that uh, the signal people already uh, helped out Axolotl with, with a few things. So it's kind of blessed. Mm -hmm. Because with Signal, they have in the past been, well, opposed to stuff like F-Droid re redistributions of the app. Even though they are open source, they don't, they are like, well, if you want to modify our app, then please uh, also run your own servers, which I think is, uh, while I disagree with the philosophy in, in terms of philosophy something i can totally understand and makes sense from a business perspective if your mm -hmm. main selling point is being secure you don't mm -hmm. want that ruined by uh, someone creating a bad client and then somebody getting hurt because mm -hmm. of the security not being what it is in maybe i don't know some oppressive country mm -hmm. And then that would reflect back badly on Signal because you know how it is. Uh, you know how media headlines go, right? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I get that point. Um, but yeah, so it's, I don't it's... think it's coming. But honestly, uh, there are two options. Like as I said, Signal Desktop, Axolotl um, is another one. You can also use Anbox to run the APK, mm -hmm. uh, which works okay-ish, I think, in my testing. Although, yeah, you know, Anbox uh, uses a ton of RAM and makes your phone slow. So, yeah, depends how viable that is. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't think this phone was slow enough. <laughs> <laughs> if you think you want to run out of RAM even more, just run Anbox all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and one tap in Firefox is enough to make it crawl. <laughs> yeah, you should really uh, use ZRAM or a swap partition by then if you use mm -hmm. Anbox all the time. But um, these are the current options we have. Uh, otherwise, I would say just use something that's more open and federated, like something XMPP-based mm -hmm. or matrix-based. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think can. that it's it's really cool that uh, that Signal is helping out uh, Xolotl. Axolotl. Axolotl. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it just shows the power of collaboration. Yeah, it does, and um, I'm I'm really hoping that this uh, goes well, and that we will have. I would really love to see an official endorsed signal uh, client for our linux phones mm -hmm. but i you know i wouldn't bet on it <laughs> so yeah that was a nice question thank you for that mm. hot house games and now um uh, sadly uh, we seem to have run out of questions so please get in some new ones otherwise how can we continue I mean, I bet we will find some if we look in all our drawers here, but um, uh, please get some in. And if you ask a question and we haven't answered it yet, maybe we've uh, lost it because we are not, well, not really good at question bookkeeping, if that is a thing. I don't know. Mm. We can yeah. call it that. You could call it that. So just resubmit your question then. We're sorry. <laughs> uh but that would be the easiest way to get it in. The podcast is listed in many directories. Um, yeah, because I took time off, I couldn't get it into GPodder. <laughs> <laughs> so we still can't report full success yet. I think this is going to be a meme. Uh, honestly. I, think, I think so too. You should just perpetually never add it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With the promise of one day, I'll get around to it. Yeah. What a glorious day that will be. But for the time being, if you are using the MP3 feed, uh, you can check out the chapter markers. 
These can be handy if you vaguely remember something we have talked about, like uh, how Peter wanted to add this podcast to G Potter as an example, <laughs> and you could easily find that moment again. Um, or you could find a segment uh, really boring, such as Peter keeping reminding you how he wants to add this podcast to G Potter, and you can skip right ahead. That's right. And if you don't need those chapter markers, because um, you just <laughs> skip the entire episode or you just go through with it because you're deaf, um, save some bandwidth and use my beloved Opus version. Once more, a huge thanks to Nerdzo Media for being our awesome audio producers. And that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening. We'll be back in two weeks. Remember, this is a community podcast, so please leave feedback on what we should do better, get your suggestions in, and feel free to ask questions. By the way, we've got the suggestions to get in guests, and now that I'm relaxed after my uh, time off, I will certainly uh, follow up on that and try to get some more people for interviews for the next episode. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, you bet it will. <laughs> you can join the Discord channel, Pine Talk Podcast, on Pine64's Discord. You can send us an email at pinetalk at pine64.org and tweet at us. We're at TalkPine. We've joined Mastodon recently. Uh, we're at TalkPine at Fostodon.org. If you can't remember these names, just use the hashtag AskPineTalk. Yes, that's it. So thank you for listening and goodbye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.